Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anil Shirati, Professor and Consultant. So in today's session, that is session 6 on Management and Economics, we will be dealing with simple interest, compound interest and one problem to understand the concept of simple and compound interest. So what do you mean by interest? Interest is the money paid for the use of borrowed money in case if it is taken as a loan or return on invested capital if it is uh, done from investment point of view or if you are going and keeping the amount as a deposit in the bank. The history of interest date backs to the record of transaction of humanity. In earlier days there were no coins or notes or capital was represented by the wealth in the form of personal possessions. For example, a loan of seed given to a neighbor before planting was written after the harvest with an additional increment. During the period of Greek Roman empires, the interest rates are standardized and legislated. The concept of interest has not changed since. In the ancient days, lending or investing was not so convenient because of most of the transactions were of individual type. There were no banking organization with which can act as a intermediators or no credit instruments in the market. Today, there are many credit instruments. Most people use them. Business and governments are the big borrowers. Business firms or a company seek money to increase their productivity while government need money to build the basic infrastructure to their citizens like bridges, highways or public services, welfare programs etc. Even as an individual we will borrow the money to, made, to meet certain necessaries maybe home loan, car loan, two wheeler loan etc. In this contest both a borrower and lender should acknowledge the time value of their commitment. So suppose I am uh, keeping a deposit for one year in a bank at, at an interest rate of 10%. At the end of the term when I go to the bank, bank has to return my amount deposited with interest back. Similarly it applicable if I am taking the loan, whatever the uh, tenure we have decided, whatever the EMI we have de uh, uh, decided that I have to pay on time. There are two types of interest. One is simple interest and another is a compound interest. So let us understand this both one by one. Let us start with the simple interest. So what is a simple interest? Interest earned is directly proportional to the capital involved in the loan. Okay. So what it means is interest is charged only to the total principal or capital involved. So let us understand this equation. How you can calculate the interest earned in case of a simple interest uh, formula. So for that one uh, we have used uh, some symbols. So I is the interest earned through several time periods. So I is the total interest earned. P is the principal amount. So this is nothing but the amount we have deposited or amount we have taken as a loan. I is the rate of interest earned per period and N is the number of interest periods. So this can be find using the simple equation. I that is the total interest earned is equal to P the total amount invested or total amount taken as a loan which is denoted by principal amount P. I is the rate of interest and I is the period for which the uh, interest is defined. Now what will be the total amount the borrower is supposed to pay to the lender or the future sum of money is whatever the principal he has taken or deposited plus the interest earned. So what is the interest earned? I that is from this last equation I got I equal to capital I equal to P into small i into n. So that we are getting here and if I rearranging we got the equation that is the amount I have to pay is P into 1 plus i into n. 
Now, where n in the last equation is not a full year, we can calculate the simple interest by following two methods. In case n is not a full year. Now, ordinary simple interest, the year is divided into 12 30 days period or a year is considered to have 360 days or by exact simple interest and year has exact calendar number of days that is 365 and n is the fraction of number of days this loan is taken. Now let understand this simple interest uh, concept using a simple problem. What the problem says find the future sum of the money to be paid to a lender for a loan amount of rupees 1000 taken for two months at an interest rate of 10 percent so what is happening i'm uh, the person is taking a loan of rupees 1000 for two months at an interest rate of 10 percent so so what is the uh, in this case p the principal is 1000 rupees what is the rate of interest 10 percent or 0.1 and I need to find what is the future amount he has to pay. So we know this equation F is equal to P into 1 plus I comma I into N. Now if I go in using a simple uh, ordinary method, what is N? N is the period. Okay. So what is the period in this case? 2 months. So suppose I am dividing complete year into 12 equal months. So this becomes 2 by 12. And that and I am substituting here. I, I am substituting 0.1. P I am substituting 1000. I got the amount as 1016.67. If I am using ordinary simple interest method. Suppose I am uh, uh, using the exact method. Now in exact method. Let's for assumptions. I assume uh, for non-leap year. And let's say uh, I am calculating the interest for January and Feb month. So what happens? January is having 31 days. Fab is having 28 days. And total number of days in the year are 365. So N is equal to whatever the uh, 30 uh, this part. That is number of days 31 plus 28. So January have 31 days. Fab is having 28 days in non-leap year. And total number of days in a year are 365. So if I do this calculation, again I, uh, P is 1000 and I is 0.1, that is 10%. So if I calculate this, I am getting the approximately same answer in this case, that is 1016.16. Right? So this is how you calculate uh, the simple interest. Now what about the compound interest? In compound interest, this is the method of charging interest on the interest earned. The total amount the borrower is supposed to pay the lender varies drastically when compared to the simple interest charged. Now what are the equations we are using? So what happens in this case? Uh, we are explaining with this simple figure. So I am uh, putting a money P okay, at an uh, interest rate of I and I want to calculate what will be the future amount after N periods. Now uh, let's denote in between uh, the sums. Let's say F1 is the future worth amount at the end of first year. So if I withdraw the amount at the end of first year, the amount I will get is F1. Similarly, at the end of uh, second, let's say it is denoted by F2. Similarly, at F nth period, it is Fn. And the rate of interest is I. Now, we know what is the interest earned in case of a first year and that is the principal I have to pay plus what is the interest earned for first year. So, interest earned for first year is P into I into N. So, one year. So, that's why uh, uh, P plus P, P into I and it can be rearranged P into 1 plus I bracket close. What about F2? F2 that is now in this case from the second year 
the amount suppose here i am getting f1 correct now for the second year when i am calculating f2 f2 will depends upon the principal amount will be this one okay so here whatever the amount you have got it on that we will pay the total interest not on the actual principal okay because here again some amount of interest is earned that's why it will uh, we say in compound interest case interest on interest is charged so what will be this one f1 into f uh, f1 into i because the same here whatever but here p becomes f1 so if i rearrange i got f1 into 1 plus i uh, but f1 is again from here i am substituting this f1 value that is p into 1 plus i so f2 is becoming p into 1 plus i raised to square similarly if i do for fn i will get p into 1 plus i n times and if i rearrange this equation it will become fn equal to p into 1 plus i raised to n where 1 plus i raised to n known as compound interest factor now let's calculate and understand what will be the interest earned in uh, if i use a simple interest case and if i use a compound interest case now see what the problem says calculate the interest earned on the principal of 1000 for 5 years period using simple interest and compound interest and the rate of interest given is 10 percent so what it means is i have in uh, this is called as cash flow diagram okay uh, so one zero to five years is the period so first at zero year that is start of this uh, period i am investing rupees 1000 and i want to know what will be the amount i am receiving at the end of fifth year okay so this is money is went down sorry went from your pocket that's why it's coming towards the negative side and this is coming towards the positive side okay that's why it is shown down and it showed up now if i use a simple uh, instead of equation if i uh, use a regular calculation what it means what it means is from zero to one year what if at the end end of one year if i calculate the interest what is the interest earned 1000 principal into 0.1 is the interest so 100 so at the end of first year if i withdraw the money the amount i will get is 100 plus sorry 1000 plus this 100 so i will get 1100 okay now at the what is the interest earned from 1 to 2 again if you see here the principal re, uh, the interest is calculated again on the principal itself so here i am getting again another 100 so if end end of the first second year if i withdraw money i will get principal that is 1000 plus these two interest interest of the first year and second year so that is 100 plus 100 similarly so the total amount i'll get is around 1200 rupees if i withdraw the amount at the end of second year similarly at the uh, end of third year again the interest is calculated on the on the principal amount only okay so that's why it is called as simple interest so what is the total amount at the maturity principal amount i have to pay plus the interest earned from first year second year third year fourth year and the fifth year so this is sir the interest on all the four years and this is my principal amount so total it come to 1500 now use instead of using all this stuff i can use a simple formula that is f equal to p into 1 plus i comma n so what is i 0.1 n is 5 years okay this is 1000 so i get directly 1500 so whatever i have shown you here that is the way how the simple interest got calculated but but in future you have to use this equation only okay now let's calculate the same interest rate if i use the compound interest formula so what is the total interest earned in this case was 
what is the total amount I am getting in the future that is the 1500 rupees minus what is the amount I have invested around 1000 rupees. So total interest earned is 500 using a simple interest formula. Now let's understand the compound interest. So what happens in the compound interest is at the end of first year when I am calculating the interest rate remains same same uh, concept principal is 1000 1000 into i becomes 1100 so total amount i got is 1000 plus 100 that is 1100 now whatever the amount i will get that will become the principal for the next year so from 1 to 2 years the interest is calculated on 1100 not on this 1000 so that's why the total am principal amount is changed so it contains original principal amount plus the interest and then I will calculate the interest on this that's why the compound interest is called as interest on the interest so here I got 110 the total amount go at the end of second year is 1210 rupees now in the third as when, between second and third year when I calculate the interest for the third year again the principal is changed to 1210 like this the procedure will continue now using all this complicated concept I can directly use this equation that is f equal to p into 1 plus i comma n so 1000 i is 10 percent n is 5 years so I got around 1610.51 so you can see the total interest earned in is 1610 minus that is the total amount I at the end I got minus the invested one so here you can see using the simple interest you are getting a total amount of interest of 500 but if I when I use a compound in it I am getting around 610 so that's why interest on using a compound interest is heavy than the uh, if you are using a simple interest formula okay so if you are using a compound interest method the interest earned is more if you are using simple interest method interest earned is less so in today's class we went through what is simple interest what is compound interest and we saw the basic how you calculate the simple and compound interest even we saw the formulas which you have to use and with a simple problem be able to understand that the uh, interest earned using a compound interest method will be more compared to simple interest method so if you have any questions or any queries you can contact me or you can even mail me thank you everyone